hi, I'm Jamie Ruby. Thank you for talking to me today. I appreciate it. I, I seen the pilot and I enjoyed it. I'm excited to see more. So um, the first thing I want to ask is, how did you guys prepare? I mean, obviously, you, I'm sure you researched these kind of jobs, but did you, you know, shadow anybody or anything like that? Yeah, so what was really fun is uh, we all had different types of training um, as soon as we sort of landed in, in Winnipeg and, and we're, about, we're about to do the thing. Uh, so we had medical training where we, we divided up into the, the nurses and then the pilots. And so the, mm -hmm. the nurses had medical training, which was a full day. Um, and then the pilots had pilot training and um, they, you know, went up and play. We actually, we all got to go up in planes, which was really fun. And the pilots sort of sat more at the front and watched what everybody was doing. Um, and we had ATV training, so we all knew how to whip around on ATVs. It was overall very fun. <laughs> but yeah, we, we definitely, we definitely got to, um, you know, sort of have little crash courses, which was great. Sounds like a lot of fun. Do, do you, yeah. I was going to say, do you have anything to add? Go ahead, Morgan. Oh, um, yeah, we had an onset EMT as well who was kind of going through procedures with us right before um, or the day before. And um, yeah, there was a doctor that was on set that helped me learn how to suture. Um, I was suturing an orange uh, behind <laughs> the scenes to try and learn how to do it properly. Um, yeah. And, you know, we went up in planes, just like Natasha said, and uh, did lots of YouTube uh, research as well. <laughs> for flight nurses I wasn't sure uh, everything that it entailed for flight nurses um, I've only ever shadowed a, a nurse in a hospital so that was kind of new for me and um, yeah yeah okay Kian Thomas anything to add <laughs> um, yeah like the Natasha and Morgan are saying we did the medical training uh, it was kind of like going back to school again it was like cramming up uh, months of actual EMT training into a few hours. So that was very interesting. We took a lot of notes. And uh, shout out to Medical Steve. He was a onset uh, EMT. And uh, <laughs> he helped me a lot because I've never done anything like this before. So hopefully we look like real professional, <laughs> uh, medical professionals. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Right. Yeah, exactly. Going off uh, what Keon just said, like, I find it's always such an interesting uh, process because it's all this condensed learning that you have to do in a couple months or a couple weeks that's got to be like years worth of actual experience yeah. and it becomes a question of like what are we what's our objective here are we trying to train like you know world-class whatever or are we just trying to look like you know we're performing at that elite level so for the plane stuff <clears throat> I mean I knew nothing about you know flying planes when I got to that set I was um, so it was more of a consultation thing. You know, I, my experience was from like playing video games and stuff. So I got in that cockpit and I was like, okay, where are my missiles? Where's that? <laughs> this one's the energy shield. Definitely. Turns out there's none of that in a plane. <laughs> it's actually fairly, uh, there's not much to do when you're mid flight. The most exciting parts of the whole and most dangerous parts of the whole thing are takeoff and landing. That's the most involved. Yeah. It's when you have to be the most. So you know, I was always looking for stuff to do in the set, you know, but um, it, yeah, it was, uh, you know, especially that like, I don't know, the plane stuff was fun and, and it was simple enough, like basic mechanics of it, you know, you, you, you get all that and the physics of it, but man, all the medical stuff that these three had to, had to learn in such a short amount of time, it was like day by day by day by day, here's a tracheotomy, here's a, you know. Uh, and what yeah. was, what was interesting is the med the nurses and the pilots were kept very separately, like our different training. And so the pilots had no idea what we were doing and we had no idea what they were doing. And I remember walking and we would always be briefed before every scene, like the medical aspect, we would be taught how to, you know, pull a syringe or whatever we were doing. And the pilots would be briefed, okay, you're landing. These are the switches that you have to flick. These are the things that you have to do. And I remember walking into the green room one day and they had a whiteboard and there was like all of these weird drawings and all of these like labels and I had no idea what the hell and then like it was the last day of filming and I was like oh my god like that's they they drew the interior of the of the like plane so and that's how they were learning from from the pilot consultant they were like but anyways because everything was so separate I was like what the hell are these drawings and then I realized yeah <laughs> through the cockpit which was pretty cool cool so, sounds very detailed and confusing but cool yeah um, so I want to talk a bit about the characters. Um, obviously, Haley is hiding something about herself. Um, Crystal is hiding something about what somebody else is doing without giving spoilers on either of those. 
Can you both talk about sort of how that is going to affect, I guess, their performance at their jobs? And then for the two of you, since we really don't see a whole lot of your characters yet in the first episode, maybe sort of what your characters will be struggling with, not necessarily a secret, but just in general. We'll go, Natasha, go ahead and yeah. first. Yeah, so obviously, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious in the first few episodes that Haley is hiding something and she's running from something. Um, and you don't figure out what that something is until um, later on in the season, but there are little breadcrumbs where I think, you know, audiences will be able to take some, some guesses. Um, and what's interesting is she, I think it makes her stronger um, going into the, the Sky Med world. And, and I think she's a little bit in and over her head, but she wants that distraction and she wants that challenge and she wants to, um, you know, face her, she wants to distract herself and, and run and, and, you know, throughout the, the season, you, you sort of figure out why that is and, and you understand a lot more about her. And I think there's going to be um, people who also can really relate to her and, and, and feel for her. And um, yeah, and then, and then at the end of the season, you kind of, audience, you're going to be left wondering what happened, wondering what happened. So it's pretty exciting. And um, yeah, I can't wait for people to see her arc. All right, Morgan? Yeah, um, you know, Crystal is, without giving too much weight, is covering for someone else that uh, she does care about. And, um, you know, Crystal com comes across as, uh, you know, mama bear, mind the claws kind of thing at the beginning. And um, I feel like throughout the show, you'll see that everything for her is just very deeply personal. Um, she, her community is up North. That's where she's from. That's where her people are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where her family is. And so everything that she does is from um, out of love and uh, out of, you know, care for, for her community. And I think the animosity between, you know, you'll see with Natasha's character, Haley and, and Crystal is, um, you know, there's this new flight nurse coming in and it's kind of testing Crystal and it's, um, you know, she, you see her kind of having to deal with um, those new flight nurses that come in and go and do it for the money. And it's, it's not what Crystal's about. That's not what she's doing it for. So, um, and you'll see her kind of carry on this theme throughout the show uh, with everybody as we take care of our own. And I think once you win <laughs> Crystal over, you really do win her over for life. So, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. He and trials and tribulations of Tristan. <laughs> well, uh, well, trials and tribulations, uh, a <laughs> lot of pain. Don't want to give away too much, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tristan's kind of like the, the the local radiant sunshine of the group when there's some negative energy, he'll crack a joke or, you know, just kind of liven things up. But uh, he's also got a deep past that he doesn't necessarily want to explain to anyone. And eventually Novak here gets him to open up. And, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, stay stay tuned. There's there's a There's a lot of interesting twists and turns with Tristan so yeah all right Thomas what about Novak yeah I mean it's an interesting question because these characters are all you know they're all very much you and me which I think is you know a cool thing about the writing in this show but it also makes every single character in this show like they're all heroes you know they're all doing mm -hmm. these really really incredible things that, you know, demand a whole lot of sacrifice. Uh, and, you know, uh, that was a really interesting thing to say that, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're all kind of running from something, you know, um, you know, what that is, obviously, is, you know, gets revealed over the series. But for me, at least, I think about, you know, it must take a certain, like, why would you want willingly put yourself out there somewhere that's so remote, somewhere that's so lonely, you know, it's, there's got to be a reason for it and for for me I think at least it just all that all the brooding and all the kind of solitude that you see with Novak I think belies this real need to feel needed by someone or something there's a need to feel uh you know wanted and accepted and I think he's out there doing all this stuff I think he wants to sort of be a bit of a guardian you know he doesn't really he's not great at interacting with people but I think he wants to sort of 
feel like he's a useful part of the team because you know in a way that means he, he's deserving of love you know um but uh yeah you know he doesn't make it easy for himself that's definitely part of i think the fun of that character all right yeah um, I was thinking back to what Natasha was saying about all, all the things you guys had to learn and the details of everything. Um, but did you, in the process of filming this, kind of learn anything about yourself, like introspectively, that you hadn't thought about before you started filming? Just whoever wants to answer. <laughs> Sorry, maybe that's hard. Um, I guess uh, I learned that there are some aspects of Tristan. It's I, I don't know if anyone can agree with it, but... When you, when you first got the scripts and you're reading and you're reading the character descriptions and the stuff that's happening, it's like, whoa, like, I, have I been, have you guys been following us with like a drone in our lives kind of? <laughs> yeah. Like, how, how is this, like, this is very similar to my real life, but like, obviously some things not so, but very much so. So it's, it's like very interesting with the casting and how we're able to kind of like find ourselves in these characters so it's it's crazy it's my first time experiencing anything like this and it's very interesting very smart writing team so that's all I gotta yeah. say about that one I mean personally I just learned a lot about um how lucky I am I, I mean I grew up in in the city I never had to worry or think twice about healthcare or you know the, the closest hospital or you, you know and so I mean I think I just I was very naive um, and I think filming this show and learning about these stories and, and these communities up north with, you know, the closest hospital, the closest to healthcare, you know, thousands of miles away and, and it, you know, it not being easy to um, access. I was obviously, you know, very humbled and, and I feel very grateful for what I have. And so I think that's what I learned most about filming the show is how naive I was and, and how fortunate and lucky you know, we are. All right, Morgan, Thomas. Oh, um, I mean, for me, I think just this whole project in general was a real, real turning point in my life as a human being. I, I it was coming out of a really low point, you know, uh, what with the pandemic and how that affected the industry and and my life subsequently. It it, it was the first time I think I'd ever felt uh just just how much i really need to feel that you know kind of connection and that sort of family and that teamwork when i am on a project it's you know it, it's and it, it came at a time where i think i was able to sort of bring myself to that experience in a way that you know like these guys all made it so easy for me to just be myself and open up and that brought so much more to the work and it, you know, we were able to develop such a deeper respect for each other. You know, there was a couple of weeks there before we started filming where we were just, you know, in Winnipeg together, living in the same uh, apartment tower. And I, I, like, that was so, that was such a good, you know, yeah, that just led to so much incredible like work. And, you know, I was just watching some, some scenes from, from episode one just now before our interview and it was just yeah I, I hadn't thought about SkyMed in like over five months and so it was just really moving to see everyone's work and just how that translates to to the screen it, it, yeah it was really cool all right Morgan yeah I feel I learned so much about myself throughout the show and um it was kind of a full circle moment for me because my first two years in university I was planning on becoming a doctor, which obviously didn't happen. But um, <laughs> uh, I really, it was really interesting to me to be, you know, go from reading this audition and being like, hey, that, that's kind of cool. I grew up um, shadowing nurses and doctors because my dad worked in the medical field for 30 years. So um, it was really interesting to to come really full circle and, and play a flight nurse and kind of live in that um, sort of realm again and um, I felt like I I learned uh, I grew so much just confidence wise and also just um, with with friendships because I feel like I didn't have um, a, you know a, a tight-knit group of friends before you know and I felt like going into this we were all 
really on the same page of just being open with one another. And, um, you know, we, we all sat down and kind of told each other our life stories and we all became really close uh, at the very end of it. And I feel like I have a little family here with SkyMed. So um, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like I've grown a lot since we filmed season one. Great. Well, thank you so much. It's, it's been more than 12 minutes now. So thank you. I appreciate uh, all, all of your time, all four of you. And, and I'm excited to see more. And I just want to say, Thomas, I'm so sad that The Order never got another season. I just wanted to say that. I was so bad. And that didn't go back. So, I knew you yeah. were a real one, Jamie. I knew you were a real one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all of you. Have a good afternoon.